just laying those two on Anthony Davis. They've done it all series, and AD's having to fight over those guys. Well, I was going to say, and that's why he hasn't been able to have the monster game like yet yeah. in the series. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Also, on top of that, they have the reason they can do that is they have the perimeter defenders to keep guys modest and force the Lakers to short, shoot threes. But that's also why you're seeing Austin Reeves be able to get into the interior and Schroeder be able to get into the interior. They're, they're living with that. They're basically saying, we're going to keep Anthony Davis from dominating us, and we're going to make other guys beat us. And the Lakers have. Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves, D'Lo was super saying D'Lo yesterday. I mean, the dude saved the game. <laughs> Literally saved the game. Uh, he made, what, three straight threes? If it wasn't for that, we lose that game. Hands down, because yeah. Memphis was on a run. We had no, it seemed like we had no answer. They were absolutely killing us. Bane starts going off, all that stuff. And it's just, and then D'Lo comes in, hits back to back to back threes, and all of a sudden we're up to. And it was like, whoa, like yeah. when nobody else was scoring. So uh, that was just massive, which you got to credit Darvin Ham for um, bringing him in, because D'Lo was not having a good game prior to that. Uh, yeah. But he did in the third. He did. I actually think. And I have a video coming out at 8 p.m. Uh, it's scheduled. But in that video, I, I broke down D'Lo's game. Um, in that third quarter, he scored like six straight points or seven straight points, something like that, for the Lakers in the, to start that third quarter. Uh, he had, like didn't miss a shot. And then he got fouled again, which put him in foul trouble again, which I think if he never got into that foul trouble, he would have – he might have went off. He yeah. might have kept scoring because, I mean, he scored like six points in the first like minute and a half or something like that. So, yeah. and then we saw what he did in the fourth quarter and it pushed him to 17. So, I mean, he scored like 12 of his uh, 12 points in the in the third and fourth quarter, or third, yeah, third and fourth quarter, something like that, um, or more than that. I think it was like 14 in the third or fourth quarter. But my, po my point is like he could have, he might have kept going if he didn't get into foul trouble. Um, yeah. But, you know, and – and look, I, again, I mentioned this in my video, so I don't want to go too much into it. Everyone, you can go watch the, the video after this live stream. But um, like one of the things that I talked about, and the reason I think you got to give him credit is like he took out Rui Hachimura. And Rui didn't have a good – Rui didn't have yeah. a good shooting game, but he was still really good defensively. He still did a lot of things great. And, mm. and like there was – like even in the live stream, like when I'm watching it, I was like, why are you taking out D Rui? Like, yeah. I'm okay with D'Lo coming into the game, but why are you taking out Rui? And it was a great decision. <laughs> it, it turned out right. And, but that's what yeah. I talk about. Like, that's why I say, like, none of us know more than the coach. We're yeah. like, we, like, many of us think we do. We think we know how, what Darvin Ham should and shouldn't do. But yeah. he's the one that's there with these guys day in and day out, every waking hour. You know, he's the guy that's there, that's that's running the schemes, that knows his players, that knows what they're capable of, that knows what they can do. And he knows that D'Lo isn't afraid of the moment, that D'Lo can come into the game and have a big moment. And he did. He literally saved very likely the postseason because we lose that game. Without a doubt, we lose that game. We had no, we couldn't score, and Memphis was just killing us at that point. And D'Lo yeah. came into the game. Great adjustment, came, at, came into the game, and it just took over. And he probably would have continued – but then he got that cheap little foul on Baines, which I hope the refs aren't this bad for the Lakers uh, when we move forward. I really yeah, think I, the, yeah, the, but it's for me, it's the lack of consistency with the refs. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like hey, like you know, it's not like hey, we're gonna you we're not gonna give you this one this turn. You're gonna get it next turn. No, it's more like there's a whole bunch of fouls that aren't called. But then in crucial moments, a foul is called that, you know, that really should have been called. And it was like, Dude, there were weird. several, there were several, I mean, even like there was a play where Anthony and Davis. Poor AD. Pulled. He's just down there on the post. Dude, like AD's getting, getting, AD's like, getting hammered tugged down. on and beat on. And like, there's nothing being like, it's crazy. Nothing. And, well, there, there was a play where AD had the ball where he, uh, LeBron like threw it up. He went and got it and yeah. went up to go dunk on it and triple j literally grabbed his shoulder and like around his neck area and pulled him down and they called the foul but they didn't even check it like 
That's the the rule says it's above the head and neck area. It doesn't say, oh, if it was, and he didn't like it wasn't like he went for the like he no, he grabbed his shoulder and grabbed over by his neck and pulled him down. That should have been looked at as a flagrant. The problem is, is that or I think, I don't know this for sure. Let's put our tinfoil cap on for a minute. But I think Triple J, who is the defensive player of the year this year, mm-hmm. I think that the NBA does not want him fouling out every game. Because if you watch those games, he should be fouling out every game. And what's funny is he's second in the league. And you that, though, because it like ruins good basketball. That, it you know, it makes Look, I don't mind the little – don't call the little Tic Tac stuff, but you can't call uh, D'Lo's sixth foul on, like, a phantom call or a little, you know, bump that uh, didn't affect the shot or didn't do anything. And, you know, and That's then, and then yeah. go down and not call a, a, a literal slaughter on Anthony. Like, again, like you said, the consistency. There's no consistency. Like, what is it? What are we doing here? Like, how is – like, what is there? And a lot of it – I just – I don't understand how a guy – who averages, who is second in the league in fouls, all of a sudden can't draw a foul. Literally, he's second in the league of fouls and cannot and is averaging two and a half, three fouls per game. It makes no sense. But you look at Carl Anthony Towns, who leads the league in fouls, not mm-hmm. by very much, but is he's number one. And then um, you know, uh, uh Triple J's number two. Carl Anthony Towns is fouling out every other game. He fouled out in the last game. He had five in the game. He's averaging five fouls a game. I understand yeah. when it comes down to your sixth foul. You know, the refs, they don't want to, they, 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 they know, okay, this guy has a sixth foul. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, yeah, like you're going to be a little, know, get this little, guy out of the game. I don't want to be, the well, yeah, you're going to be a little bit more lenient. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's something, you know, clearly blatant, but there is some stuff that's just blatant, blatant. Like, you know, or even the thing, uh, where Triple J hit, who was a shooter, shoot, yeah. hit shooter in the nuts, and they reviewed it and they said it wasn't a flagrant. They said it was above the waistline. How do you hit some? Like, w- was Shooter's, you know what, tucked into his <laughs> stomach? Like, did he have it tucked in? I mean, you know, we've all done it where you tuck it into the waistband, right? <laughs> Especially in like high school and stuff, you know, and you got to get up and you got to go in front of the class and you're a kid with all these hormones. It happens. We've all been there. We've all done that. But you're telling me he got hit in the nuts and they said that he got hit, that he got hit in the, what, the chest? I mean, oh. shooter, shooter's got the Eiffel Tower, huh? That dude, that dude's just up to his neck, huh? Like, what is going on here? And like, okay, if you don't want to call, like, I, I didn't. I didn't want him to get ejected or anything like that. I didn't want anything yeah. major, but I, but you still got to call the call. It doesn't say like, Oh, like there was, there's just all these little things that seem to continuously fall into Memphis's wheelhouse. And, yeah. you know, and it's just, it's insane to me. Like it's. <laughs>